It has been said that in Twilight Struggle, you need to know the cards well in order to play well. Well, we're going to take you through every card one by one, and we're going to help you become a master at Twilight Struggle. This is Legendary Tactics. Destalinization is one of the big events for the Soviets in the early war. It can set the Soviet up to win, so the U.S. is going to really have to know how to manage this one. Let's learn how. This card is a Soviet 3-op starred event card which features the following event. The USSR may relocate up to four influence points to non-US controlled countries anywhere in the world. No more than two influence may be placed per country. For the Soviet player, this card is one of the most important events for you in the early war, but it is really about getting access to important areas that are hard to get to. For that reason, you should use this event to get yourself established in the regions that become relevant in the mid-war, especially the Americas. Outside of the regions that come into their own in the mid-war, the only spot you should normally consider for placing influence might be Thailand. If it is a tight race to get there and you have somehow been locked out thus far with savvy American play. This card pairs especially well with the other powerful Soviet early war event, Decolonization. If that's the case, you can use Decolonization to get into Southeast Asia and Africa, and Destalinization to get into Central and South America, with South America being the priority. If you don't have Decolonization, you will likely want to split the influence between Central and South America and Africa, with the likely targets of Venezuela, Brazil, Argentina, or Chile in South America, and Angola or Algeria in Africa. Venezuela, Brazil, and Argentina are important because they are otherwise hard to get to, and Chile is great because its high stability dissuades a U.S. coup. While South Africa would be a creative choice, likely resulting in an influence battle, Angola is the most important battleground in Africa, both because of the access it gives you and the fact that it hinders access for the U.S. And Algeria gives you access to France. Though if France is uncontrolled, you may want to place one of the influence directly there if it serves your needs. Alternatively, if you want to play it safe, you can place the influence in a way which resists realignments, like two in Venezuela and two in Brazil. Central America is less of a priority simply because there are other ways in there. The Fidel event, for example, gives you access to Cuba. Panama is a great coup target until reinforced. And there are other events in the mid-war that grant you easier access. There's also the risk that any influence placed in Mexico will be easily realigned out because of its proximity to the United States. Where do you take the influence from in the early war? Well, Finland is an easy answer, and the earlier play of other cards like Comic-Con, Warsaw Pact, and Romanian Abdication can provide the rest. These cards can also reinforce areas afterward that you had to draw down in order to satisfy the conditions of destalinization. There are other options as well. You could bring over influence from countries where you want a coup especially decisively. Also, you can pull influence from regions that have already been scored, with the goal of replenishing the influence before the scoring card comes up again. But don't miss the opportunity to relocate the full four influence, even if it hurts you in the short term. This event is simply too valuable to be stingy. Now, you may not want to headline this in the early war, as the risk of the defectors event blocking it is substantial. Also, it's unlikely you will want to headline this in turn 1, because the success of this event depends on DEFCON being at 2 on the next American action round. This is so you don't suffer from an immediate US battleground coup, which gifts the Americans some military ops and possibly a key battleground state. The big enemy of destalinization is the voice of America, which can undo all of its good work. Lucky US realignment roles are also potentially a problem. Make sure that you follow up and reinforce your influence placements as soon as you possibly can. For the US, this is a card like decolonization that you want to hang on to until after the reshuffle that occurs on turn 3. This is not a small thing as, in the long term, the access that this card provides the USSR can cost you the game. 
Make it a priority and take your lumps in the early war if you have to. If this event happens later, it generally is much less effective. If you do happen to have it in your hand after turn 3, just send it to space. If you find it in your hand after turn 7, you're pretty safe to play it for ops. In summary, this card opens up the globe to the USSR, and the options are truly dizzying. There are some targets for the influence that do jump out as relatively obvious, although don't be afraid to also take advantage of surprise and opportunity. For the US, this is an event that you want to avoid, at a cost if you must. If your opponent gets it, see if you can realign him out if you can afford the ops, or take advantage with a coup if you can. If you are lucky enough to get it in your hand, hang on for dear life until turn 3 and then space it. This has been our analysis of the de-Stalinization card in Twilight Struggle. We hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please like, and please subscribe, and please join us next time, here on Legendary Tactics.